I think uh, to the non-surgeons uh, out there watching this today, uh, there's no doubt that within the field of lung cancer surgery, nothing has made quite an impact over the last quarter of a century than the advent of minimally invasive lung cancer surgery, which we all know as VATS, video-assisted thoracic or thoracoscopic surgery. However, VATS itself is not new. This is old news. I mean, it's been around for 20 odd years now, almost 30 years. What has advanced uh, uh, over the last 20 years is one, I think the accumulation of scientific data that confirms the role of VATS. And we know that it's not just a matter of uh, improving individual patient outcomes. Okay, you get less pain, uh, quicker recovery, fine. But the great thing about VATS is that by reducing the uh, surgical trauma, surgical access trauma, we're opening up curative resection to more and more patients. So that nowadays, I think around the world, there are very, very few, if any, absolute contraindications to curative lung cancer surgery um, uh, at all now. I think we can consider patients of any age, of any amount of uh, comorbidity uh, within an MDD discussion. We can discuss these patients nowadays. So that's the first thing, science. The other thing, of course, is the, um, uh, uh, the, the improvement in the surgery itself. Now you think, okay, we've got very minimally invasive keyhole surgery already. How can we make it better? Well, two things, technique and technology. In terms of technology, um, uh, the, the tools that surgeons have today compared to just 10 years ago, wow, huge difference already. So we can um, uh, not only have better uh, video systems, better reception systems, energy devices to make surgery a lot easier and safer for patients, uh, but we can also help identify the small lesions we see nowadays, uh, for example, during lung cancer screening. So these small lesions, that traditionally are very hard to detect during keyhole surgery, we can now very precisely locate for good surgery. In terms of technique, um, well, traditionally, we used to do keyhole surgery using three, sometimes even four wounds. We've cut that back now, and now we can do a curative early stage lung cancer resection through, for example, just one single port that size. We're talking about three centimeters or even less. And you can imagine by limiting the surgical access uh, trauma to such a degree, the um, morbidity inflicted on a patient is at its lowest ever level. And of course, everybody's heard about robotic assistance. Uh, the old uh, robotic systems have been around for 20 years now, but we're moving on to new generation robots and hopefully that will also improve our overall technique. But it's not only the wounds we're improving, we're also improving what we're doing once we get inside the chest. So uh, we're uh, now moving into the era where more and more we're doing sublobar sections. In the past, as we all know, we'd remove as surgeons a lobe of the lung that has a cancer. We can do even less than that. In selected patients uh, where they're suitable, we can just remove an anatomical segment. And if we select patients correctly, we're achieving the same oncological outcomes as traditional lobectomy. So this is a very very exciting era, which further opens up surgery to patients with previously poor lung function or who are unwilling to have surgery. Nowadays, you can literally come in, uh, get your surgery done, uh, go home in, in, in less than 48 hours with minimal loss of lung function, and you're cured of your cancer. So that's the uh, holy grail, I think, of lung cancer surgery. And we're getting there. So things are happening um, with uh, lung cancer surgery. And I think it really behooves us as thoracic surgeons to bring some of these advances to the MDT uh, so that our uh, oncology colleagues, both medical and radiation oncology colleagues, realize that uh, surgery is not the scary option that uh, we used to think of. It's not that bad. It's actually a very quick, simple procedure with very, very good and improving outcomes.